Yeah, we're here. How are you guys doing? Hello. How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm not going to introduce you too long because I already did. But what I would say, what I would say is that um, um, in Coral Gables, I once uh, I sit on the Sustainability Advisory Board, and one day uh, Rafael came and did a presentation for the Chamber of Commerce, and I was blown away by uh, what they've accomplished, the, the the app that they created. If you want to get inspired in regards to tech, what technology can do to save the world, but in this case, uh, uh, save food and also uh, still make money. Uh, you, you need to look up to them. So with that, I'm just going to let you uh, introduce the, the concept of Lovet and um, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're Monica and Rafael. We are the co-founders of the Lovet app. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Teddy, Lokesh, Elaine, and all you guys who are organizing this event. We are so excited to be here with you, and I think it's a, we think it's a terrific idea. So very proud to be participating of this kickoff. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so the idea came along uh, kind of like a year ago. Uh, we had the, the professional opportunity to kind of rethink what we wanted to do with our future. And uh, we wanted to, to, to create our own company. Uh, and we wanted to be a blend of uh, technology, which I'm passionate about. And it's what I've been working all my life. And uh, we also wanted to do something with, uh, with a purpose, something that really had an impact in, in the society, right? So, um, you know, browsing ideas and so on, we, we came to realize that uh, ever since we came to the States uh, around nine years ago, we are already citizens, but uh, came from, from Europe. Uh, she's uh, French and I'm uh, a Spaniard. As French Colombian. See, yeah, as you can see by my <laughs> accent. But uh, ever since we came here, we, uh, we were astonished by the amount of uh, waste that, um, that was produced. And it was kind of like cultural. It, it was embedded in the operations of the restaurants and the grocery stores. And we saw that there was too much waste in comparison with uh, what we had at home. So uh, we thought that there must be a way to, uh, uh, to address it and, and to make things... Uh, less wasteful in a convenient way, right? So uh, that's a, uh, what we came uh, out of that uh, reflection was an idea of creating a marketplace where uh, any, uh, uh, let's say, excess food that uh, any merchant or food business had uh, could be uh, put in contact with, any, with a consumer that would be willing to buy it at, uh, at, the, at the discount. So the, the, the power of technology comes in actually connecting uh, business that have uh, food waste um, uh, who maybe for some reason they cannot donate it or the logistics are not there or there are not uh, organizations like the one we saw before which is uh, amazing uh, to help them out with that waste and uh, and to connect them with people who, who would be willing to, to help them reduce waste in their operations. So uh, by connecting that supply and demand uh, through technology, uh, we thought that there was actually an opportunity that was not being addressed by anyone and that we could uh, try to uh, to address, right? Right. And yes, no, I would just like to point out that Rafael and me, uh, we are actually foodies. We're crazy about food and we very much enjoy, you know, trying different kinds of foods. And, and for us, it was really a shock when we arrived in the U.S. and we realized that so much food was being waste, not only here, of course, in the whole wide world, but we felt we needed to do something about it and try to contribute to the environment. And that's also one of the reasons why we decided to create Love It. Yeah. Uh, our concept is all about love as the name, you know, itself. We are in love with the planet. We are in love with, uh, with people, with food, with sharing a nice meal, you know, with friends and family. And uh, we wanted to uh, share all of this information with you guys. Yeah, yeah. The, this uh, love theme is, uh, we think it's important because uh, sometimes we, uh, we address uh, issues kind of like fighting against a problem. And mm -hmm. what we wanted people to do was to embrace something positive, right? And instead of, you know, fighting food waste, which is actually what we are doing, uh, we thought it would probably be more positive and, and, and easier to convey to uh, people that, quite frankly, are in general very uneducated around these issues to, mm -hmm. hey, conscious consumption. Yeah, when don't you embrace something uh, better, kind of like a better lifestyle, something good, something better for you, for the community, for the environment. 
So uh, we read somewhere that I think it was Gandhi who said that uh, the love was more powerful than any other force. So we decided to mm -hmm. help everybody fall in love with uh, conscious consumption and, and embrace a more positive uh, lifestyle. So uh, uh, of course there were many people uh, during this process that told us uh, we were crazy, too difficult to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, we were indeed a little bit crazy, actually. Yes. <laughs> we launched during the pandemic, so that was really crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, so far, so good. I mean, it's it's a journey, as, as all the entrepreneurs here know. It's it's really a journey, but we think it's, it's really worthwhile uh, fighting uh, the good fight. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, we prepare a brief presentation to share with you guys. I, I, I think we are the last one, so you must all be tired, so we want to make it real quick. But uh, just to uh, highlight wait, a few wait, wait, We still yeah. have a uh, Food Recovery Network uh, coming up, uh, so... Oh, okay. Okay, okay. good. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, are you... Okay, so... Work. Are you able to I see... I need to share my screen, right? Our screen? Let's see. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So we are sharing the presentation and let's put it in present mode here. Okay. Um, so, uh, well, this is uh, actually our motto, love it, great food, uh, great deals, one purpose. We want to make it easy for people. And uh, the, so, yeah. yes. So as we were saying, so more than one third of food produced is never eating in the United States while, you know, one in six Americans are still food insecure. So we thought that was completely insane. And also um, because food waste is so much related to uh, gas emissions, uh, we just wanted to share these uh, numbers with you. The, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, um, you know, if uh, food loss uh, was a waste, was a country actually, it would be the world's third largest emitter. It's only surprised by, you know, China and the United States. And uh, that one third that we were discussing about, it's, uh, it represents about 4.4 gigatons of green gas emissions. Which is pretty crazy. And it definitely, as we were saying, it makes absolutely no sense to be throwing, you know, edible food away. And we uh, we really focus on our our message to, the, to our partners, to our restaurants. And we ask them that instead of throwing food away, Put it on, put it for sale on the app, and sell it half price. Um, so that is the idea. Okay. Okay. Well, this is. Uh, I think somebody shared the, this slide before. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, value chain uh, of food uh, production and consumption, what we actually all come to realize is that the largest opportunities. Uh, lay at the uh, retail and household level is where most uh, food produces waste, either because uh, the retailers, be the supermarket, bakery, uh, the restaurant, etc., they, they they throw away a whole lot of uh, food, or be by because uh, we as consumers we buy a lot of food that we end up uh, putting in the fridge uh, or, or the pantry, uh, and at some time uh, we end up throwing away instead of eating. So. It's actually in households uh, and retailers mm -hmm. where the largest opportunity exists. And, and the problem we are uh, trying to, to tackle and to address is, is at the retail level. We, we also, I mean, we envision as part of our mission to, to address all the parts of the value chain, but it's the finally at the retail level where there is a great uh, opportunity uh, for change, right? So um, our plan uh, and our vision is to have a, a world where uh, nothing goes to waste and uh, both consumers and merchants can be enabled to uh, effortlessly make the right choice. Uh, we think that the, the right choice, which is not wasting, uh, should be made uh, easy uh, and simple. It should be not difficult. You know, and, More accessible. Yeah. Yes. And the, the truth is that uh, today is difficult, and that's the reason uh, that it happens. You know, when a merchant has uh, uh, more food than it has sold, uh, it has few options. One of them is donation, but uh, not uh, uh, available every time or everywhere. If you know, if you are a large uh, grocery store, you probably have uh, agreements in place with the main, uh, the most important charities or, or food banks, and you can actually donate all or part of that uh, 
uh, excess food. But if you are a small mom and pop shop or a small retailer, uh, that that opportunity is just not there. So, um, and even if if the opportunity was there, uh, uh, there are stats that say that, that there is actually way more food that in that is wasted than than we need. I mean, even if we fill all the food it's banks incredible. and all the donation centers that we have, uh, still we will have more food. Uh, than is needed. So eventually food would be wasted because uh, we as a society has become so good at producing at producing food, uh, so good at distributing food that we have uh, way too much food than we need, right? So this is a way actually to give them tools to very easily and very affordably, uh, you know, change the path of uh, the food and instead of going to, to the landfill, go to, to the bellies of, of hungry people. Right? Um, okay. Well, let's see. Okay. So uh, our mission when we created the company was to um, to inspire and create a more sustainable communities uh, by connecting uh, the supply and demand that we were mentioning before. On the supply side, we have uh, responsible businesses uh, that want to do good, and uh, on the demand side, we have consumers. Uh, and we do this through uh, a movement that we try to inspire and animate every day through our social media, uh, our communications, our education activities, and so on and so forth. And as, as also, we, we try to do this through our uh, digital marketplace, which is uh, basically an app uh, that we will show later where um, consumers find uh, excess food that is made available by merchants and merchants can very easily post uh, whatever excess food they have. So um, what we provide is, uh, is a fair and efficient platform that allows merchants to uh, showcase and, and sell their product and monetize the, the, their surplus. Uh, the, the monetization part, we think, is uh, is important to them. Uh, I don't know if everybody is aware, but uh, restaurants, um, food business in general, are among the most difficult businesses to run. Uh, there are also competitive forces. Uh, there are statistics out there that say that uh, only uh, five percent of every restaurants that open in a given year are still on business five years after. Uh, opening the doors, right? Uh, and their um, their margins are razor thin. So if we are able to uh, helping them reduce the food waste and at the same time make uh, uh, make their business a little bit more sustainable, not only from an environmentally standpoint but also from an economic standpoint, we think uh, this is a value proposition that will stick. Uh, uh, with them, right? So, um, uh, well, as I said, what we give them is a tool to to effortlessly uh, make the right uh, the right decision. Um, so the, the app itself is an app that you can all download from from any uh, uh, marketplace, the App Store or the or the mm -hmm. Google Play Store. Uh, a, a, an app where instead of finding uh, you know uh, retail items. Uh, or any other type of goods, you find excess food and food that is made available by merchants. So what the merchants do is that they easily uh, post any uh, food that they want to make available to the to the community. Uh, they post it at a discount, uh, and they can do so from their laptop or from a tablet or from their phone uh, very easily. Uh, the consumers uh, that are nearby, uh, they are made aware of uh, uh, food surplus around them uh, with a special prices they are in general heavily discounted and they can buy for buy them in the app and uh, and pay for them in the app and, and pick them up in the store as a takeout so uh, the merchants mm -hmm. also see this as an opportunity to to actually uh, at the same time that they are reducing the food waste uh, they're attracting new customers yeah attracting new customers through their door the and, and uh, you know make them regulars eventually so uh, it, it's at the end of the day there are all people in the community that are uh, aware of this problem and want to do something good so they, they already have something in common when they go through the door and hopefully they they become regular it's a it's like, a win-win because consumers get to try different kinds of foods half price Restaurants are, you know, reducing their food waste and at the same time they're attracting new customers and increasing their profits. And of course, you know, uh, we are reducing waste and gas emissions in the mm -hmm. community. So it, we, we like to think it's a win-win situation. 
Yeah, this is a summary of the uh, benefits that uh, each stakeholder in the transaction get, and the uh, the benefit for the merchants, as we said, uh, is that they are able to uh, stock up the shelves the same way that they do today, in order to to be able to offer products to anybody who who comes through the door. But instead of you know throwing any anything that they have left over by the end of the day, which is the case today. Uh, sell it, right? And uh, we have created some tools for to help them calculate the type of uh, a boost that they can have in their mm -hmm. bottom lines. And it could go from 10 to 15 percent boost in the bottom line, which is pretty amazing. But if you think of it, they already have razor thin margins, as we said before, uh, very uh, little profit. So if something that was going to waste close to the bottom line is a net gain for them. At the same time, they get a new customer. They they, they contribute to the environment. Uh, so far, we have sold around 3,000 meals. Mm -hmm. And if you crunch a few numbers, that's almost uh, four tons uh, of uh, CO2 of waste, that has yeah. been saved mm -hmm. from, from the landfills. Uh, on the uh, consumer end, it's a way for them to, to save money uh, as well as uh, discover new places in a very affordable way. And also feel good about what they are doing for for the environment with every every one of their approaches decision what a decision what we say is that we we'd like to to empower the conscious consumer you know the the, the consumer who is actually uh bagging or putting their dollars to work for the for the good causes right and uh, so it becomes a triple win solution because it's a win for the consumer it's a win for the merchant and it's eventually a win for for the community and the the environment as a whole right and uh, as every other effort that we are mentioning here, this is a very uh, complex uh, problem to tackle. It's, it's not easy. There are a whole lot of uh, uh, ingredients and mm -hmm. components that need to come into place in order for it not to happen. We have spoken about regulations, uh, efforts at different levels in the value chain. Uh, in our case, it takes really a community. We think that uh, it takes a community of uh, involved unconscious consumers and also uh, committed uh, merchants uh, uh, that want to make a difference. Uh, and that's what we strive for uh, like every day. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, if anyone wants to, to download the app, <laughs> they can do it from, from the app store, scanning this uh, QR code or obviously from our uh, website or Instagram account. And uh, we, you know, we would like everyone here uh, and everyone to join our knows, movement and, yeah, and follow us movement. on social media yeah. and let's try to make this world a better place for everybody, right? Uh, at the end of the day, that's all we are all working towards that goal and we're very happy to, to be here. You might be able to hire someone from... Uh, from <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. We are, yeah. That's exactly what you're doing. You're doing a, a tech app uh, to solve uh, two issues at a time. And I, th I think that's what's, uh, what's interesting in all the presentation we've seen. We went from uh, campus with the planned campus uh, solution in a, in a college environment to a nationwide solution. Uh, from nonprofit and and something like yours, which which is a, a for profit, right? Lovet is a for profit. So yeah, we, we we like to call it a social for profit company in the sense that uh, yeah. we we draw many principles from what is called a, a conscious capitalism. In the sense that uh, we feel that the business with the right uh, incentives and with the right goals in place uh, are actually a very powerful force for we change. Need power. I'll yeah. be right back with you. Yeah, and I think I think it gives our, our the students in the room uh, a really wide range of possibilities that everything is possible, uh, non-profit, for-profit. Um, that what what I'd like to do is just uh, open it, uh, the the floor for some questions uh, for you, Rafael, but also for uh, Ramiro if he's still here, uh, because I know that um, uh, maybe some people had questions about plan. And again, we'll send you all the, the details, information, but if you have a question, don't hesitate. That's the moment for you. And yes, in the, absolutely. In the yeah. meantime, Erin um, uh, will uh, uh, prepare the, our last speaker, Natalia, who's, be, who's been... Um, yeah, I, I would actually be interested in, in learning more about uh, you know, what the, the, the efforts being made by the other speakers in mobilizing their campus or mobilizing their communities. 
Uh, for us, that's a very important component of the solution. We actually have a, in the webpage a, a section called Pioneers for anybody who wants to join, and there are a zillion ways to uh, to join and make a difference and make a, 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 an mm -hmm. effort. But I would really like to to learn from uh, from the previous speakers how, how they are, uh, you know, what type of things are they doing to mobilize their their communities. Uh, toward this uh... um what well, one thing for sure we're going to send this recording to everybody so even even if you missed portion of it you, you'll have a chance to look at it but uh yeah um uh, whoever is, is in the room evan or um cooper uh, ramiro definitely you can uh you can ask questions but also our our, our students uh in, in the session can ask questions um Anybody can ask questions, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there, is a, there is a question from Evan, actually, Teddy. Yes. Uh, Evan, Evan? I ask it. I have no problem asking it. Yeah. Um, first of all, amazing idea. I absolutely love what you guys are doing. It's spectacular. And, and conscious you. capitalism is definitely the way to go. There's no reason to uh, box people in and think that it just has to be a nonprofit structure. For profits, businesses can certainly do wonderful things. So, mm -hmm. Something that you had alluded to is that it often takes a financial incentive to get yeah. food producers to work with you. Yes. So Good Samaritan found the same thing. And although we'd like to believe that people would just donate food at the end of the day because there are people starving, mm -hmm. we as a nonprofit give them a financial uh, incentive because anything they donate to us mm -hmm. is a tax write-off. So it, just uh -huh. like you had mentioned, I grew up with people who owned restaurants. I know how difficult the restaurant business is. And 95% of business of restaurants in New York did not make their December rents this year because of the pandemic. Yeah. So it is really an incredible issue. My question is for the food that your partners and restaurants put on the app that is not sold, what do they end up doing with those food items? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I guess, unfortunately, uh, most of the time uh, uh, they end up throwing away it or maybe giving, in giving it to employees. Uh, we have some of them who uh, actually donate. So uh, sometimes they, they try to donate first. If they were not able to donate it, they put it on the platform. Or sometimes it's the other way around. Or they do half on, and half. Depending on their priorities. But, yeah. uh, you know, as much as we want to introduce efficiency in the marketplace and connect every uh, extra uh, supply with the demand, it, it's not always possible. I'd, I'd love to speak with you guys. I think it'd be interesting to add an additional option to your guys' app that if they're not able to sell it, to connect to hypothetically maybe Absolutely. Good Samaritan. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is actually one of our, our goals too. We would yeah. like to, you know, partner in order to be able to donate through the app as well, because we do feel it's, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's really very much needed these days, especially with COVID. And, you know, as you were saying, all these people that are unemployed and, and kids that are not able to, you know, to eat on a daily basis, uh, so this will definitely be a, a plus. Yeah, let's come. And that's a big uh, goal for us as well. Yeah. Yes. We, we must join forces here. <laughs> I think uh, definitely the, the, the this uh, this presentation uh, tonight is giving also this opportunity to connect people with each other. Not only um, uh, wonderful, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, any question for Ramiro or uh, or uh, Rafael and Monica? Because we have uh, Natalia who's going to be um, speaking in a second. Okay. I guess one question from Tyler, uh, Tyler Wang. Tyler? Tyler, uh, you need to unmute yourself. Unless... Tyler, you... <laughs> Let's see. No, he said when students asked major retailer, retailer to donate the items they throw out at night, they exclaimed that they discount the items before throwing it out for credit from their producer. So I missed the part of your presentation where the retailer discounts the item, which are some of the items. I don't know what's the question here. Yeah, we actually, we had something like that happen to us where uh, a very large or grocery store said that they would prefer not to donate because their supplier, the people who provide them with produce, with boxed goods, with anything along those lines, they get a discount returning those items to their provider. So I think it's a question about the financial incentive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that happens. I mean, we, we, we have all sort of, uh, um, as uh, Evan has mentioned before, we, we experience all sort of uh, objections, you know. Um, these, I mean, some of them make sense. 
Some others are just, uh, you know, a way to <laughs> to yes. get you out of the way. But uh, you have people who say, uh, I totally uh, uh, hear heard what uh, Eva mentioned before about, uh, hey, our food is too expensive and we don't want to uh, to make it more affordable. We want to be, you know, like a pricey mm -hmm. place. Uh, if people can't find things uh, on the cheap on our restaurant, that's not where we want to go. There are some other people who just tell you that uh, they don't have any waste uh, and you know for sure that they do have a lot, whole lot of waste. Uh, some others say, hey, I, I have a, 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 you know, my, my producer pick up the food for me, which, you know, mm -hmm. if it's consumed, it's great. The problem is that you know that that's actually a, a garbage collection because they pick up the food to them uh, throw it away. It's not, uh, you know, in the case of retail, you, you, you have that uh, peace of mind because you know that uh, the the items or the clothes they are taken to a warehouse and then they are taken to an outlet uh, uh, where people you know find it on the cheap day later or so months later and then there are other tertiary markets and so on because they are not perishable but in the case of food which is perishable unless you sell it uh, on the spot or the day after uh, it's going to go to waste anyway, so it's a it's a way to kind of like put a bandaid on the uh, yes, on yes, the uh, on absolutely. the one and try to feel like okay the problem doesn't exist but the problem exists nevertheless. And unfortunately, you know, some restaurants are not able to donate because of liability purposes, and well, that, that's so. a big issue as well. No, they uh, think they are, there is liability, uh -huh, but as Evan uh -huh. was mentioning before, there is really because of the Good Samaritan uh, legislation, there is really. Uh, no or very little liability, but uh, they, they, yeah, sometimes they, they say that. I think that the, the biggest problem with um, donation, at least the, the, the largest that uh, we hear more often, is that they either don't meet the standards or the volume to uh, uh, to donate. They certainly don't know of organizations like uh, like Good Samaritan from, from Evan. Uh, but yeah, there are all sort of barriers to, to, do the, to doing the right thing. I feel like uh, you, you, you're going to have a lot to talk about, Evan and, and <laughs> Rafael and Monica. For sure. <laughs> I'm sure. It's very nice meeting you, by the way. <laughs> together, I'm sure. Any question for Ramiro before we move on? And uh, the, I think it's important to, uh, to also realize that it, during the hackathon, uh, we, we, you can think about solution uh, at, at, at the top of the pyramid. Uh, in uh, diverting the waste, the waste uh, as uh, Lovet uh, and, um, and the other organization like FarmLink and uh, Good Samaritan are doing, and what FRN is doing, obviously, also. Uh, Natalia is going to talk to to us about it in a second. But also uh, at the end of the stream uh, with composting, and so uh, it's interesting. If you if you need the advice, definitely uh, Plan is a good partner to uh, to help your campus uh, go that route. But think about that also during the hackathon, definitely. So with that, I think uh, I'm going to ask Erin if Erin uh, is still here. She's going to 